What's up, you guys? Welcome to Books, Beauty, and Stuff. This is episode six of my Hot Politics playlist. Um, the book I just read, I really had to sit down for a minute and think of what I'm going to say. But you know what? I'm going to speak from my heart like I always do. Um, before I go on, I know everybody's wondering what's on my lips. I have mixed Viva Glam 5 and it's a lip glass from MAC and Instant Gold is a luster glass also from MAC. I mixed them together, so that's what I have on my lips today. Anyway, um, Stand Your Ground by Victoria Christopher Murray is a book that everybody should read. Whether you have a, a son, a nephew, a cousin, a grandmother, anybody, you, everybody has to read this. This is something that is needed now. Not only just that, it's needed for, it should be on school list to read, um, high school, college, um, even junior high school now. I know it may be too adult, but I would say at least eighth grade because this is so important for us to learn about the laws in this country when it pertains to stand your ground and especially with the racial relations going on now with, um, in 2015. Um, also with the murders of Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, um, many others that have been killed even back in the 90s as well too. So I'm going to give you my review and get back on my soapbox a little later, but I'm going to tell you about the review. Janice Johnson and Tyrone Johnson have a son named Marquise. You know, he was on punishment for a while for uh, smoking, a, uh, smoking a J in school. And he got suspended and locked up for it. And you know Tyrone jumped on his ass for that. Excuse my language, but he did. You a teenager. You're going to experiment with doing a lot of stuff. So since then, you know, he's scared of his father. So he ain't going to do it no more. Mm. But the book opens up as Janice and Tyrone about to get it in. You know, because she loved the sight of her naked man. They about to get it in and get nasty with it. So the door knocks. 9 p.m. You know, they ain't expecting no late visitors. They expect Marquise to come back from the library. That's probably it. But most likely he has a key. Um, the cops tell them that her son has been shot. Now, I read chapter one on her website when she put chapter one out there. And I literally had goosebumps reading that. Because I, as a black man living in this country, I already know for a fact this is not easy. It's not easy having to go down and walk down the street constantly with your guard up. Your guard up all the time. And it's so... It's heartbreaking for parents, parents to lose their child, their only child too, especially any age. And if the boy's a senior, he's about to um graduate, move on to college, you know, we could do big things, but his life got cut short from an assad from a jerk's a coward's bullet. Um then you have they talk about a lot of things that went on. They talk about his brother Raj, who was a part of this group in Philadelphia called the um Brown Guardians. Basically they protect and protect people in the neighborhood. They get justice by any means necessary. And Janice don't really feel, is not feeling Raj because of the fact that Raj used to be in a relationship with her best friend, Sarita, who happens to be Marquise's godmother. And, you know, he used to beat the dog mess out of her. Slap her, punch her, drag her by her head, stealing her the whole nine yards. You know, every time they're in the relationship, she'll go back and stuff. And ever since then, she couldn't get over the forgiveness about that. Now, that's another subject on another day with domestic violence, but I'm not going to go there today with that one. So, we go to, you know, we go to Dolores, and then we found out later on a lot of things that went on in their marriage, too, with um, Janice having an affair um, outside of the marriage with the pastor on top of that. Ow, that's juicy in itself, but that's another subject for another day. Um... You also have a lot of things that's going on with it. You know, the emotions, the funeral, trying to go see the body, but they tried to say they couldn't. Somehow the Brown Gardeners was able to see it. And when they found out it was a white blonde man that killed his son, it made it more personal. Now, and I, 
I have to under I do understand where that comes from, you know. Especially with this crazy stand your ground law and self defense and things like that. And it's a lot of crazy it's a lot of crazy BS with that law, but I get into that later. Okay, definitely the second part deals with um Meredith Spencer, the wife of the shooter Wyatt Spencer. Now, Meredith had came from a tough background herself. Her mother was on food stamps, welfare, you know, they was on section eight. That goes to this that goes to prove the fact that black people are not the only ones on welfare. Welfare across all uh color, racial lines and whatnot. But anyway, you know, she grew up in a tough background. She started working, she meets Wyatt, you know. She meets Wyatt, you know. They get to know each other and things like that. They get married, have a child. Now, at first, Murder wasn't in love with the man, but she seems like it seems like that she falls in love with him as they get married and stuff. You know, I think she see him as more as that he rescues her from her current situation. You know, trying to get her life back together, trying to get herself together and stuff like that. Um. I actually like Meredith. Don't don't hate me, but I actually like Meredith because she seems very compassionate. She seems very very bent on doing the right thing. Her mother and his her um his the lawyer, which happens to be um their son's godfather, disgusting. I can't stand her mother. I will go in on her mother all day, but it's not the time and the place for. I forget it. I'm gonna do it anyway. Her mother's a skank. Her mother's a nasty. Her mother's a gold digger. Her mother's trifling. Her mother just sees the money. She don't give two games anyway. I don't like her. Straight up. Um, but, you know, she sees more of what happens before they're trying to um, put a story together for the media so why I could basically get off. She sees the realness of it. And it hurts her soul. And then she realizes right then and then she's also pregnant again with her second child by them. Baby, let me tell you, she, like, Meredith was going through it, honey. Just like Janice was, Meredith was going through it. Then you have the trial. Then the fourth part comes from him. <sighs> this actually was one of the best books I read in 2015. I'm telling you, like I said in the beginning, this is should be recommended for all, all um, age groups. Not all age groups, I'm sorry. Probably, like, from eighth grade and up. Well, maybe not eighth grade because it does have some language and some scenes in it they don't need to see. Probably from freshman year of high school on up because this is the law we need to talk about. Like I said in my videos when I was promoting the book that you can understand why me and Victoria are so passionate about learning the law, the government, voting, um, learning about your um, the laws that's in this country and why it's important to vote in every election, not just um, the big ones like the presidential election. Why is it important to vote in the midterms? Why is it important to vote in the county um, election? Any small election, you have to vote. This book had me up and down. I cried because, like, oh, my gosh. Like like I said, it's so much inside me, and people don't understand. Like I said, at the end of the day, you're not going to understand. You're not going to understand until you is, know it, how it is to be walking our shoes, you know, or be a human. Um, you can under, You may not understand. Some people do. They can't understand because they're not understanding to be black. But they, they get it. They truly get it. Anyway, um, thank you guys for looking at Hot Politics Six on Books, Beauty, and Stuff playlist. Um, Victoria, thank you once again for s sending me the book via got through via um, mail. Um, and thanks for the beautiful autograph. Excuse me. This is what she put in my book. This is the autograph she sent me. Which was so sweet of her. Um, just thank you guys for just supporting me for the almost three, two and a half years now. So, anyway, I will talk to you guys later, and thank you for watching. Bye now.